country. Three things had swung the purchase of Miles House, apart from its location close to town and to the sea, and its garden backing onto a part leafy with ancient trees. The first was the verdigree door knocker, an old brass ship riding on the crest of a wave. The second six empty large sweet jars, each with coloured lids, sitting unused on a shelf on which the vendor agreed to include in the sale. Well, had spotted these jars in the pantry, she had a good collection of them already. They were now rarely to be found in second-hand shops, especially those with beautiful original labels saying superior confectionery or Arcadian malt fingers. The pantry itself was a third reason for buying the house. On this particular morning, she looked into the narrow room intending to rationalise its densely packed contents. The jars glinted back at her from the shelves. Not long after moving in, she'd relocated the pantry to an adjoining outbuilding close to the kitchen. It was here that she would venture out, usually after dark when calling the cat in, or to bring the washing in, or when fetching a jar of pulses to be soaked overnight. Flipping the hook on the wooden door, she fumbled for the switch to trigger light from a bulb dangling from the cracked plaster ceiling. She wondered if it would have looked any different in there. 80 years before when electricity first modernised the house. More lights stand in the blast of yellow light from the doorway, the black outlines of the trees and gloom behind her, gloom behind her. In their neat rows filled with orange lentils, yellow split peas, molasses and other dried foods secured under bright coloured lids, the repurposed sweet jars were instantly illuminated with a warm glow. The thick glass twinkled amid a chorus of smaller glass bottles and preserves and the promising velvety tones of the contents. Mel was transported, as always, through space and time, anticipating smells and flavours, and the release of rich pickings, of summer walks, or friends' bountiful gardens and trees. Encapsulations of all kinds jostled on these shelves, syrup of poppies, perfumed liqueur violets, lychee juice, infused vinegars and pickled shallots. Jars of crunchy cornichon from France rubbed shoulders with capers and olives, with tins of pâté and garlic squid from Spain, leathery sun-dried tomatoes in cellophane packs, a Bayonne ham. Mel checked over the reassuring supply of speckled pre-lentils, of buttery pine nuts, green pumpkin seeds, dried fruit, oats, pasta and rice, aromatic nuts and nutty pulses, the silver and red stripy bags of coffee from the Canaries, boxes of tea, long-life milk, racks of wine and beer. She often imagined how she might one morning find a prospective burglar stopped in his tracks, having located the spare plates from the top shelves and slumped amid open bottles of wine and used cutlery.